If you get too close to this wall, you will get pushed to the side. This is to keep you from being crushed between the wall and the train cars. You can only take advantage of this once though. Here's what happens if you try it again. There's a combine soldier above this spot in Root Canal. It's possible to see these manhacks in an undeployed state. You simply have to kill this cop before he finishes pushing a button. The manhacks will become active if they're disturbed in any way. Odessa will simply drop the RPG on the ground if you stay at the right distance away from him. Ah yes, Gordon Freeman. I couldn't have asked for a finer volunteer. Colonel Odessa Cubbage at your service. Damn. Citizens can grab a gun from your hands just like they would grab one from the ground. Let's even the odds a little. You, waiting for somebody? you can also trick them into dropping their gun if you move the other one away at the right time. Nice. Ah! Some items in the game will change based on what you need most. You can shoot enemy grenades, but not your own. Valve knew that this scene could break if something was placed on top of the buggy. If you try to block the crane with something breakable, it will just break it. If you try to use something not breakable, it will simply remove it. Good, here we go. Some levels have quirky things happen if you try to load directly into them. If you load directly into the first level of Follow Freeman, your RPG will have no ammo. This is to keep you from easily killing the snipers. Loading into the level before gives you no RPG, and loading into the level after gives you one with full ammo. It also makes that weird clunking sound. On one level of Water Hazard, you're spawned inside the hazardous water. When you load directly into a map, the game spawns a bunch of items on top of you, and usually you immediately pick them up. However, sometimes this doesn't work out and you can miss picking up items. If you load directly into the map that's under the bridge in Highway 17, you'll have no weapons and be on the far side. If you manage to get all the way to the other side, you'll find that the force field is just not there. You will also find yourself defenseless on this map in Nova Prospect. Caution. 
If you load into either of the two maps directly after getting the supercharged gravity gun, you will have some of your regular weapons. Blame, of course, my disappointment in Eli Vance and Isaac Kleiner is far greater than my sorrow of your unfortunate choice of career path. In a way, I suppose you could not have done otherwise. Who knows what seeds of iconoclasm they planted when you were young and gullible, but while they certainly share a great part of the... There's not much I can say about this one. Using an explosive barrel, you can break this door. I'm glad you're not the guy they're looking for. Poor bastard doesn't stand a chance. Calling in every CP unit in City 17. Now they're flooding the areas up ahead with manhats. You better get going before they sweep through here. Oh shit! Too late! Normally at this point in the map, if you go back to check on the guy that you were just talking to, you'll find that he's died. <laughs> if you try to push him to come along with you, you can see how he dies. It is difficult to push him out unless you do it exactly as shown. give you some supplies to keep you going and you really got to go Good luck out there oh. Touching a strider's leg can sometimes launch you into the air Often in the game, an NPC will say multiple lines to try to get you to do something. There's no time to waste here, Gordon. Get a move on. I'm sure we've all seen this before, but here are some instances of it that you probably have not seen. Move it along. Hey, move it now, will ya? Get going, Gordon. Will you get going? They're right outside. Get going. Hurry up. Go ahead. Slip into your suit now. Time to suit up, Gordon. <clears throat> Let's get a move on. Gordon, if you please, I'm eager to see if your old suit still fits. If Dr. Kleiner says you should wear that thing, you should wear it. Don't worry, I won't look. Get your suit on, Gordon. Come on, Gordon. We don't have time to fool around. Get your suit on. Gordon, the longer you delay, the greater the danger to us all. Get going, Dr. Freeman. I can see Eli was right about you. Get going, Doc. We gotta break camp. Let's get a move on! We gotta clear out before they target us. Give it a try. Take it. Take this. Doc, come! Huh? Come on, Gordon! Come on! Get in here! Come on, hurry! Into the airlock! Now! Before they spot us! Hey! Look what he left behind! The gravity gun! <laughs> he doesn't have a clue, does he? Gordon, get the gravity gun! Take the gravity gun, Gordon. AR-2 energy balls will stick to crane magnets. Grenades may stick or go through the magnet. If you stand on a headcrab and punt it with the gravity gun, its speed will be transferred into you. If it dies from being punted, the entire force of the punt will be transferred into you.
Being bit by a poison head crab temporarily takes you down to one health. If you're at full health, this attack deals 99 damage and pushes you back a really long ways. This is odd because any source of damage can be configured to not push you. For example, damage from fire will not push you. Some people have suggested that this is an intended thing to create distance between you and the head crab. I don't believe this because there's too much inconsistency. You don't get this huge push if you're on the ground or you have low health. Most guns can be reloaded faster by first looking at a friendly NPC or going into any cutscene that automatically lowers your weapon. The gun will move up before reloading, and the game thinks this moving up animation is the reload animation. The actual reload animation will play after this, but you can fire during it. When stuff goes near these holes, they move weird. You can also break open these holes before the roller mines spawn. They have 10,000 health, so it takes a long time. These batteries will respawn if you throw them away. This one, though, doesn't come back. On this one level, crossbow shots can go through Alex. This is to keep her from blocking your shots, since she's close to you for most of the level. Weapons and pickups can freeze crossbow bolts. Ammunition depleted. If you move the thing it got stuck on, it'll continue like nothing happened. Half-Life 2 physics are obviously not perfectly accurate to the real world, but there are some places where Valve straight up cheated physics in ways for various reasons. I will show many examples. When a vehicle is stuck upside down, it will usually flip itself over without any help. Ironically, in the cutscene at the start of Highway 17, the buggy is forced to flip upside down. Even though the buggy is clearly upright, you still have to exit and re-enter the vehicle for it to begin working. Crane magnets are configured to swing less than normal. These doors don't actually fall like this. The 
the way the train sends you into the air is clearly fake. Many times in the game, an NPC's dead body is pushed a certain way for various reasons. Most of the time it's just to look cool. When an antlion can't find a way to get to you, it will burrow into the ground. Antlions will do this immediately, no matter where they are. When a burning citizen catches on fire, they will slowly become charred, just like zombies do. Unlike zombies, their reaction is not as intense. One of my favorite Half-Life 2 bugs is this. Zombie torsos, much like their parents, will try to look at you the entire time that they move around, even if that means walking backwards. The problem is that torsos don't have a backwards walking animation, only a forward one. When an NPC with an SMG dies, the amount of ammo left in their gun depends on how many shots it would take to kill them. This means that NPCs with larger health pools will give more ammo. Since your difficulty setting affects damage amounts, SMGs will have less ammo on easy and more ammo on hard. If you gain health after dying, the game will partly think that you've come back to life. Some would even call it a half-life state. Ha ha ha! If you hold down any movement key for the entire time, you can move around. Moving around in this state is kind of like swimming. If you look up and press forward, you will start to float off into the air. You can even use the controls for swimming up and down. You can get into this state by dying as a medic gives you a health kit, or by getting hit by a poison head crab and dying before the poison has fully healed. Even if they can see you, enemies will avoid shooting you unless you can see their head. As you know, this crow flies directly into a barnacle. But if you kill the barnacle fast enough, the crow will fly on to freedom. However, if something hits the barnacle before the crow does, the crow becomes jealous. Attention. Community. Unrest procedure is now in effect. Inoculate. Shield. Attack. 
structure detected. Vital signs critical. NPCs that die on these stairs will fall into the ground. Sometimes in Half-Life 2, things will only activate if you're looking in a certain place. The cops near this dumpster will not spawn as long as you don't look at the place that they come from. This cop won't start to push this barrel until you look at a spot near him. You can even look directly at the cop and he'll never do anything, and the barrel will never light on fire. If you don't look at this guy, he won't give you his two crates. Look out below! On this level, if you take a specific path and avoid looking at G-Man, you can see him up close. The same is true on this level. When you look at this stove, an antlion will crash through the wall behind it, causing a fire in the kitchen. If you don't look at this stove, none of that will happen. It will also cause two turrets to not spawn. If you look outside this window, there will be a completely random explosion. If you kill the sniper's trapping Barney without looking at him, you can make him say his lines out of order. Sniper's got me pinned down. Gordon, lob a couple grenades. That'll clear him out.
things can be activated by looking at them even if you're dead. Ah, there you are! At last! In Episode 1's escort mission, there's a Combine soldier who will shoot an energy ball and cause this train to fall down. But if you don't look at him, he just won't do it. This makes this entire section a lot easier and a lot faster. This antlion grub has anxiety. In the Strider battle, some Striders will destroy buildings. But if you don't look at either the building or the Strider in question, the Strider will not begin the cannon attack. The Striders are willing to wait for up to 40 seconds. When you launch an explosive object from the gravity gun, it will always explode on whatever it hits, even if it touches it gently. In Half-Life 1, there are many things that can move along predefined paths. Some of these things can be controlled by Gordon. There's a famous instance where one of these objects isn't supposed to be controllable by Gordon, but is. There is also a less famous instance of this in Half-Life 2. Minor is far greater than my sorrow over your unfortunate choice of career path. In a way, I suppose you could not have done otherwise. Who knows what seems to my contrast to make men more young and gullible, but while they certainly share a great part of the responsibility for these problems, it is... There's a random guy walking around in this menu background. Dr. Freeman. He's not there in the actual map. In the Citadel, there are some pods that you're not supposed to be able to go on, but can. This horse statue at the end of Follow Freeman has a dick. 
It is a very low res dick, and I'm not even sure if it's erect. Honestly, 1 out of 10. Sombines will drop their grenade if you shoot them in the arm. It's well known that you can shoot these barrels from any place to bring down this gate. There is a much more obscure and slightly different way to do it, which is to shoot the wood structure itself. The two bridge levels in Highway 17 are unique in that you can see most of them from each other. By doing certain things, you can actually reach the low detail versions of the levels. Major pressure detected. Automatic medical systems engaged. Morphine administered. There's a big invisible wall here, so you have to go around it. Minor fracture detected. Many weird effects can happen when you load directly into a level and then try to go to the level before that. Basically, the game will act as if you were never there, because technically you weren't.
By going back to the start of Highway 17, it's possible to duplicate the buggy. The same thing happens with the airboat, but it's impossible to reach it. As I said in another fact video, you have to exit and re-enter the buggy before it begins working in this area. This effect applies the moment the map starts, and you can only get rid of it with the buggy that's on the dock. Levels at the start of a chapter will put up invisible walls so that you can't go back. You can get past these barriers by loading the level after the starting one and then going back all the way through that. Here it's possible to get 7 rebels in the same place, but only 4 will follow you. simply a refusal to grow, an insistence on suicide, if you will. Did the lung fish refuse to breathe air? It did not. It crept forth boldly. Gordon Freeman, you're here. Dr. Freeman? Like that! Gravity gun. Give it to him, dog. 
there, Gordon. Dog's happy to see you. I can tell. <laughs> okay, dog. Go get the monitor set up so we can check in with my dad. He must be worried sick about us. We've been trying to reach him for hours. Take the gravity gun. Wait till he hears that we found you. Alex? Alex, come in. Hold on a sec, there's so much interference. See you soon. Yeah. Go ahead. Don't worry. Take the gravity gun, Gordon. Thanks. Okay, boy. Pack up and meet us on the far side of this ridge. Whoa. What a drop. Go ahead, take the gravity gun. I'll follow you. Go ahead, take the gravity gun. person could realistically go the entire game and not realize this. 
Important NPCs such as Alex and Barney can die, it's just that you don't normally see it happen. They have high health and regenerate it very quickly. There are a few places where they're more likely to die, and this is usually because the NPCs are making terrible tactical decisions. Father Grigori has some hidden voice lines which you'll never hear unless you do some very specific things. First you have to go into this area which doesn't have anything interesting in it. Then go up to the top building and don't look at Grigori. For the dead know no sleep in their graves, nor dost thou remember them until they are destroyed through thy hand. Draw forth a sword and sheathe it in those that afflict me. Say to my soul, I am thy salvation. On this level, if you don't kill all of the soldiers in the outside area, they'll eventually come inside and kind of ruin this cutscene. Who's hurt? Winston's been hit. Patch him up and get him to the back as soon as he's stable. Gordon Freeman? It's incredible you made it. We've been getting communication from Alex. I'll see if I can reach her again. Follow me. This is as far inside as they can go due to an invisible barrier. This will cause Leon to become confused later on. Normally if you don't approach the screen with Alex, Leon will turn around and say, over here. Over here, Dr. Freeman. But if he's become confused, he does this. idea. Hold on a sec. Narco? Bring the buggy out. Put it on the dock right now. Gordon Freeman will be driving it. Will do. I just finished mounting an ammo crate on the back. Good timing. Okay, Alex, we're all set. When playing fetch with dog, the game decides that you failed to catch a box if it breaks. It decides that you've passed if you catch a box. But if a box touches the ground without breaking, the game isn't sure what's going on. It will eventually assume that you did not catch it. The padlocks in Half-Life 2 are surprisingly fragile. In Ravenholm, when you open this door, you can see Grigori trying to shoot a zombie, but missing. Notice the extra sparks. This is the exact same spark effect that was often used on electrical devices. If you listen closely, you can also hear the sound of electricity. If you try to chase this helicopter, you will be in for a surprise. It's possible to have two Grigoris at once. Avoid these areas to keep the first Grigori from going anywhere. Then you have to go up to the high rooftop where Grigori gets spawned again. Ah, there you are! 
At last. I will send the cart for you, brother. It will be but a moment. Patience, brother. Guard yourself well. Now, brother, step into the cart. Ah, there you are. At last. I will send the cart for you, brother. It will be but a moment. Patience, brother. Guard yourself well. The handbrake, brother. Ah, there you are. At last. I will send the cart for you, brother. It will be but a moment. Patience, brother. Guard yourself well. Ah, there you are. If you move through this part of Ravenholm fast enough, Grigori might say his lines in the wrong place. On this level, it's possible to see where the gunship is before it's told to move anywhere. When you break this hilariously contrived structure of wood, the train car above it will fall down a little. But if you stand right here, you can hold it up all by yourself. There are a few pieces of glass in the game which you can't break but can still shoot through. On this map, it's possible to encounter floating pieces of wood. Possibly in the past, you've been surprised by a headcrab in this hallway. That's because this headcrab is straight up cheating. Invisible walls which block the player also block pickups. you were talking about. If you've ever felt bad about leaving this guy behind, don't. Zombies will actually completely ignore this guy. Even if I use a cheat to make zombies ignore me, they'll never turn their attention to him. 
The views shown in menu backgrounds are their own maps. These have been stripped down from the originals to only suit a specific camera angle. Therefore, I repeat, evacuate City 17 at once, if not sooner. I cannot state this without enough undue emphasis. On a lighter note, if you are already in one of our designated safe zones, I feel obliged to point out that...
One comment asked for the longest stretch of levels that you can play in reverse. Here it is. This is assuming that you did play through the levels first in a normal way, and that you aren't willing to do anything too crazy to go back. There is a very small detail in New Little Odessa. It's not possible to see it happening, but this person here uses this radio to turn on the alarm. If you take it away from them, they can't start the alarm when the gunship comes. Colonel Odessa Cubbage at your service. Gunship! Damn! If the person on the tower dies, the alarm will stop with a sort of squeaking sound. Once the alarm has been activated, taking away the radio itself will also cause the squeaking sound to happen. If you take the radio away and then bring it back before the gunship comes, the alarm will sound again as normal. Colonel Odessa Cubbage at your service. If you bring the radio back only after the gunship has approached, the squeaking sound will still happen when the person on the tower dies. Even if you bring it back only after the gunship has approached and the alarm is clearly not playing, it will still make the squeaking sound when it's thrown away again. The squeaking sound can still be triggered even after the alarm has stopped and the gunship has been killed. Perhaps the Rebels of City 17 are smarter than we give them credit for. If they're low on health, they'll automatically pick up health kits and vials. You can also make them do it by telling them to stand at the location of the pickup. They will get healed for 25 or 10 health which is the same as Gordon, but given their maximum 40 health, they technically use it much more efficiently. Medics will also heal NPCs for 30 health as opposed to Gordon for 25. There are two very powerful harpoons hidden in the chapter Sand Traps. If the sharp end hits a wall very hard, it will stick into the wall. Once a harpoon has been stuck into a wall, you'll never be able to collide with it again. It can also impale basically anything. If you use a harpoon to kill the first antlion guard, the Vortigaunt will never come out to talk to you and you'll never be able to progress. On this map, if you first go to New Little Odessa, and then look through these binoculars. Mm -hmm. 
some of the things that you could see through the binoculars will now actually be there in New Little Odessa. I'd get into the basement if I were you. We're bracing for an attack. Colonel Odessa Cubbage at your service. Damn. On some maps in Highway 17, the game does not correctly distinguish between the buggy and a combine APC. On those maps, pushing an APC into water will cause you to fail. If you exit your vehicle while jumping off of this bridge, you may get launched into the air. Major fracture detected. If you hit Noriko with an explosive, she'll start playing various animations. Every time she is hit, a new one starts. People usually don't notice these two guys. Hey down there! Supplies! We're coming with you. Look out below! Hey everybody, follow Freeman! We'll help however we can, Doc. Shooting a rocket into water will slow it down. At the beginning of the game, you are able to walk around for a very short time before the introduction starts. This will cause you to see G-Man from a different angle. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until... Well, let's just say your hour has come again. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. Many small and insignificant objects will fade away when you're not close to them. However, if this is not set up correctly, bad things can happen. Thank you. 
If you lure antlions into the area where you fight the first antlion guard, those antlions will behave differently than ones spawned by the guard. aromatic pheropods. The process is not entirely ideal, therefore stand aside. The free man will have need of these pheropods on the path to head. Once you go through this door, the antlions will start listening to you. Highway 17 is not as deadly when you're on foot. When going between levels, Objects have to be in a certain area for them to transfer over. This applies to antlions as well. If they don't transfer over into the next map, the game will suddenly think that you don't have any antlions, thus spawning four more. If you take those antlions back to the previous map, you can keep them there as well. You can repeat this process as much as you want.
If you go back and forth between these two points in Highway 17, you can spawn as many Combine Soldiers as you want. You can also do it between these two areas. If you get around this car without moving it, Alex will show off her secret superpower. These free-floating energy balls are weird. You can get yourself stuck inside them for a short amount of time. There is a large tree-shaped shadow in Our Mutual Fiend with no tree to accompany it. Some areas of episode 1 reuse geometry from Half-Life 2. To do this trick, you first have to clear the first level of Under the Radar, then on the level after it, get to this point where Alex is working on a computer. Here goes. Then go to the previous level and then back again. If you get off a ladder and then get into a vehicle before you finish getting off the ladder, the game will in some capacity not consider you to have actually entered the vehicle. Get going, Dr. Freeman. I can see Eli was right about you. Let's get a move on! We gotta clear out before they target us. You won't be able to activate any of the map's triggers. It's almost as if time is frozen.
can't even activate the trigger that would send you to the next map. When you exit the vehicle, you will teleport back to the ladder. The shotgun is the only gun in the game that can remember if you wanted to fire it. If you press fire while reloading, it will fire as soon as it's finished reloading. It will remember this even if you switch to other weapons. It's hard to demonstrate this one, so just try it yourself. Usually I wouldn't show something that requires surfing, but at this place it's relatively easy to get into the water without dying. If you go too close to land, the game will kill you. If you fire a rocket and enter a vehicle before the rocket explodes, Gorn will never put the RPG away. Despite being able to walk over them just fine, an NPC's jump can be messed up by any weapon or pickup. The binoculars in Highway 17 appear to make you invincible, at least from bullet damage. In this area of Nova Prospect, there's a light fixture that has a blank and generic sort of texture. This was meant to be replaced with something else at some point during development, but it never was. Clicking on the logo in the menu will make it disappear. This can be done in any source game with a similar looking menu. Near the end of Red Letter Day, there's a couch with 10,000 health. Normally these couches would have 130 health. In this area of Ravenholm, there's a fire that slowly burns you. but not if you get right up next to the fence. You are intentionally immune to fire in this spot, because if you weren't, you could get burned by the fire from the other side of this fence. The area of effect is just slightly too big. In this crane tower, there's a soldier. If you get in the crane without killing him, he will simply be removed. I suppose if he collided with the crane's ladder there would be bugs. Most people know about how the train throws the buggy off the side of the bridge in Highway 17. It also does the same thing to a roller mine. It 
does not do this to just anything though. In this cutscene, the airboat will always be teleported to a spot where the Vortigon can work on it. Once it's teleported, the game will make no further attempts to keep the airboat in that spot. Here, take a look at this. This here is the dam, it's just up ahead. Eli's hideout is here, a stone's throw from the apron and nestled in the old hydro plant. But getting there... There we are! That gun came off one of the same hunter choppers that you're up against. I always like to bring a little iron. If you approach this area without your airboat, everyone there will completely ignore you. As long as you're a certain distance off the floor, Odessa Cubbage will not acknowledge you near the end of this cutscene. There's a huge invisible wall in Highway 17 which you can easily walk on. You must approach it by walking up the cliffside. If you play the level normally, you will fail when trying to walk on the wall. There's nothing special at the far end, but it does go all the way to the edge of the map. You can avoid being ambushed simply by staying away from this building. I'd like to take a moment to address you directly. Get out of the way! Yes, I'm talking to you. When you open this door, an Overwatch announcement will play. But if you want, you can play this message multiple times. It begins every single time the door starts opening even a little.
If you can get a good jump through this window, you can avoid spawning any of the enemies in the area ahead. Some types of shadows can change their direction at any time. The easiest example of this is inside the crane. All movable objects will have their shadows pointed straight down. Normally, your squad will not jump into this pit while it's still dangerous. That is, until you jump over this fence. 